I've long held that really, when you get right down to it, the biggest menace facing uh, the Islamic world today has nothing to do with Western um, permissiveness, Western inquisitiveness, um, or Western cultural imperialism or anything like that. The biggest problem facing the Islamic world today is the fact that for almost all of its existence, it's been in a cocoon where competing ideas were simply blotted out, suppressed, or whatever. Um, which works up to a point. Uh, people just don't have their faith challenged, so it doesn't get challenged, so they just go on taking it all at face value. And now the cocoon has been wrenched open um, simply by default, by the fact that uh, we're now the uh, global village, as it were. <clears throat> and because of the fact that this cocoon was essentially artificial, the Islamic world now has no way to blot out um, challenges to its most basic beliefs, and that's what's causing, I think, a lot of the Islamic fundamentalism in the world. People are panicking now because they're being hit in a, in a spot where they're not used to being hit. used to be before when you said, well, um, I don't believe anything that's in the Quran. In fact, I think Islam is just a pile of rubbish. Well, the, you just that was suppressed immediately. People like that were either arrested or silenced one way or another or whatever. So people just didn't develop the natural defenses. They relied on other people to shut other people up. Um, the obvious... Um, uh, example of that in uh, in our culture is uh, you know how is it pronounced e por si move um, Leonardo da Vinci um, and yet it moves um, arguing about the whether or not the sun moved around the earth or vice versa with the Inquisition um, in my opinion he prob the, the people who were t getting him to recant probably knew darn well that he was right but they were saying look the implications of this are such that um, this is a linchpin of, of our society, and if we go around questioning things like this, then the whole thing might fall apart. And uh, the question is, is that really a dangerous thing, to continue to challenge absolutely everything, the most fundamental building blocks of everything? Well, as I said, the problem is not with... Uh, Islam as a faith or a religion or anything like this. It's the habit of mind that is developed in areas where Islam was the state religion or whatever um, that made sure that anything that questioned anyone's peace of mind up here was just suppressed. That's the problem. No new ideas came along ever to get people into the, uh, into the habit of defending their positions. So, next thing you know, the door is jimmied wide open. There's nothing anyone can do about it. it, it, it the internet, mass communications, mass uh, movement of people, and suddenly everything is up for grabs. What are you going to do? Well, you're a victim not really of the permissiveness of the West. You're a victim of the cocoon of the past, of the habit of mind that didn't allow you to be challenged. So it's not as though anyone is inflicting this upon the Islamic world. It's just a result of the mindset that had developed in the Islamic world over the millennia and a half of its existence. People just weren't used to having their beliefs rattled like that. Now... <sighs> I won't say everybody is feeling this way, but there's a definite smell of this among people that are objecting to my speculations. Um, look, do you understand what you're doing here? And I think that I, I'm not trying to read anybody's mind here. I'm the first one to say that that's not possible. But I'm getting the sense that people are saying, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you realize, of course, we've just spent the last 500 years putting this crap behind us and you, in the name of science, atheism, rationalism, skepticism, etc., are threatening to bring all this crap back upon us. Do you understand what you're doing here? 
Well, yeah, I guess I do understand it. But we can't just not speculate. Um, or I can't, at least. Uh, I understand the implications of putting the clock back if we're going to start challenging, as it were, atheist dogma. Um, and yet, if we don't challenge atheist dogma, if it is dogma indeed, let's hope that it doesn't turn into dogma. Right now, I don't believe that it is, but there's elements in the atheist discourse that are definitely almost fanatically dogmatic. <clears throat> If we don't challenge these things, then people don't get into the habit of mind of defending their position. So, regardless of whether or not what I'm saying is dangerous, I'm inclined to just sort of shrug off accusations that what I'm saying is subversive to atheism or subversive to rationalism, because it looks as though I'm using rationalism against itself or whatever, rationalism for the purposes of resurrecting religion. Some people might see it that way. I don't see it that way at all, and I believe that if there was some way for people to crawl up into my head here, they would know that that's not what I'm doing at all. But it's not easy to get around that fear, because when people suspect that you're going somewhere, that you're trying to sort of say that, rationally speaking, maybe the Bible is all correct and we all ought to go back to church, especially people that have had a sort of a wrenching break with religion, um... I think they're more likely to sort of say, oh, I don't like where this is going, because it was one hell of a struggle for me to get away from religion, and there's this idiot trying to drag us all back down that path. Perhaps you'd best leave this whole thing alone. I would tell that to people who are of any sort of rigid belief set. Um, my wife is, I wouldn't really say she's of a religious belief set, but she's a practicing Christian. Her and I simply don't talk about stuff like this. She hears me. She overhears me all the time uh, making these YouTube videos. And I can see her going, you know, because it's just meaningless drivel to her. Because the psychological sort of talk, the philosophical, metaphysical, existential talk, has nothing to do with what she believes. Or... I wouldn't even say what she believes, but what all of that, the Christianity, means to her. The two are simply not related to each other. The, like, she could, I start talking about evolution, and she would say, well, yeah, I guess, maybe, whatever, okay. Because her beliefs about Christianity are not based upon the infallibility of uh, Genesis. That's, uh, that's not really where it comes from. I believe that uh, like most beliefs, it comes from here, from the heart. And you can say, okay, Adam and Eve is rubbish, um, creation myths are rubbish, uh, evolution happened, and um, you know, all kinds of stuff. There's no such thing as angels or whatever. You can you know, debunk all of that stuff. And what you've really done is you've debunked maybe that much of what they actually believe, and they just adjust their position a little bit and then carry on as before. You must know that there's lots of religious people out there who actually go to church every Sunday who believe in evolution, who don't believe in angels, and if you actually deconstructed their mind somehow, got up in there, you'd, say, you'd see that they don't even really believe in God the way you might think that they do. Um, <clears throat> so I have to say that people that are actually worried about speculations of this sort are often emotive, at least to me, of the Muslim that says... Shut him up. His ideas are dangerous. Or at the very best, they're what I believe the Inquisition thought of Galileo. Okay, we know you're right. But if word of this gets out among people that don't really understand it, watch what happens. They're going to question everything. Our civilization is going to fall down. Um, unlike a lot of people, I don't really believe that the religious authorities throughout history have been completely cynical and self-interested. I think a few of them, you know, had some vague notions that what they were doing was a necessary uh, illusion to perpetrate upon society. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't even hazard a guess as to what proportion of the 
religious authorities in human history are like this. Let's say one one millionth of one percent are like that. Okay, just to err on the side of caution. But a few of them said, look, this is necessary. I believe. Okay, I believe. This is necessary because without it, we don't have a universe to deal with. We have nothing tangible anymore. Our religion, the religion underpins our entire society. We question it, and everything just goes right down the tubes. I believe that there is... Um, a sort of mentality like that developing on the other side that um, is telling people who want to push the boundaries of science, who want to say that science might not tell us everything, um, who, or at least what we conventionally call science, maybe we just simply want to redefine science um, or redefine knowledge, are simply saying there's taboos out there that, okay, we understand where you're going with this. We understand why you're speculating along those lines. But we don't. what we don't understand, or what we don't think you understand, is the implications to the practical world of what you're doing. You're threatening to drag us all back into the primal slime of dogmatic religion. Um, I can see that as a possible pratfall. But the only possible riposte to that is e por si muove, and yet it moves. Thank you.